Hi all, Retro Tech Chris here again. Recently, I was reading up on the XT IDE Universal BIOS, and I discovered that you can actually boot up using a serial connection. So since my IBM PS2 Model 30 286 has an XT IDE card in it, I thought I would give that a try on that system. And additionally, since I was out of town when I first heard about this, I also tried this in virtualization. So today, what I'm going to show you is how you can configure booting up over serial both in virtualization and on real hardware. Feel free to skip to the parts of the video that interest you the most. But without further ado, let's get to it. So first, the procedures that I'm going to show you today are available in my GitHub repository, all on this file. I'll put a link in the description. So to get started, there are some files we need to download. The first is the XT IDE 386 BIOS. We're going to download the latest version of that. And to keep things nice and tidy, let's put that file in a directory called Serial. We'll do this with lots of files. That'll make it easy for us to find them and work with them today. So we'll go ahead and create a new directory called Serial, and we'll get that all taken care of and put our first of many files there. Perfect. Next, we need to download an older version of XT IDE Universal BIOS. This is the only place I could actually find the utility that we need to start up the server component of this. So we'll go ahead and download that, and we're going to extract the surdrive.exe file from this download. And we can place that as well in the serial directory for safekeeping. Next, we're gonna download the Kimu emulator for Windows. This will help us create some virtual images here in a little bit. So let me go ahead and download the latest version of that. And finally, for now at least, we're going to download a DOS 6.22 boot disk. So we can head to allbootdisks.com, scroll past these exe files down to the bottom where we will see the images. And we can download a DOS 6.22 image and we'll go ahead and place that in the serial directory as well, once again, just to keep everything together. And with that, I think that's enough downloaded for now. We may download some things later, but we'll move on to the image configuration procedure. So for image configuration, the first thing we're going to do is install Kimu for Windows. And you can just click through all the defaults as it asks you, and breeze right on through it. There's nothing we need to change, so it's okay, and next, 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 next. I agree, whatever it takes, install. And before long, we'll have Kimu nice and installed and available to us. So the next thing we're going to do is use the SirDrive program to create a 30 megabyte image. I figured this is a good size. You could create one smaller or bigger, but in any event, we'll start with 30 megabytes. So to do that, we start a command prompt and go to our serial directory from earlier, and run the SirDrive program to create a 30 megabyte image called myimage.ima. And yes, we get a connectivity error, but that's fine. So next we're gonna partition and set up the image to be bootable, and we'll use Kimu for that. However, it's best to do this in a command prompt window with administrator access. So we'll go ahead and launch one anew here and run as administrator. And then from there, we can go ahead and run a few commands. Let me get the window resized here. The first thing we're going to do is go to the Kimu directory. Then we're going to run this rather long command, which will configure our floppy drive and hard drive image for use with Kimu. We'll go ahead and let Kimu boot up. And then we can run fdisk to create a partition table on our virtual image. And for this, you can put in one and one and then Y, or just press enter. I believe those are the defaults. We'll go ahead and reboot. And at this point, after the reboot is complete, we can go ahead and format drive C. So we'll go ahead and do that and make it bootable with system as well. And when that finishes, we can go ahead and exit out of Kimu and our image is ready to go. So for our virtual environment, we're gonna use Oracle VirtualBox. I recommend version 6.0.18 or lower. But no matter what you use, you won't have any issues with what we're doing today, so that's fine. So go ahead and install VirtualBox if you don't have it installed already. And then from there, we're going to create a virtual machine. I'm just going to name it DOS. If you choose to name it something else, just remember it. And then from there, we're gonna say, don't add a virtual hard disk. 
and we can say continue because VirtualBox will get angry about that. Next thing we need to do is completely close out anything related to VirtualBox. And this is important for the next step to register because what we're going to do is specify that our DOS VM use the XT IDE BIOS. So at this point, we're launching a new command window and I'll get that nice and resized and out of the way here. And what we can do is go to the VirtualBox directory and we're gonna run this command. Now, if your VM is not named DOS, please substitute the name in here at this time. Otherwise, you can run the command as is. So with that, we are now configured to use an XT IDE BIOS with our virtual machine. Perfect. The next thing we're going to do is configure a named pipe. This will allow us to boot off of the serial drive server. So we can pick our virtual machine, go to settings, and then go to serial ports. And then from there, we can enable the first port, which is COM1, and set the port mode to be host pipe, as you can see there. And finally, put that address that you see in there. And with that, we'll be all set and ready to use the remote serial server. Perfect. So at this point, we're actually almost done. We need to launch a new command prompt window that's not in administrator mode. And then from there, we can go ahead and run the sir drive command with that dash P parameter that you see there and also the name of the image. And with that, we are now serving the image. All we need to do now is start the virtual machine and we'll go ahead and get that done here. It's gonna get a little angry at us as we will see. So hit cancel there to not use a startup disk. We're booting up over serial after all. From there, hit F6 on startup and you'll see that this master at com detect runs and it will find the serial drive server on COM1. And then from there, we are now booting off of the serial drive server. Pretty cool. We can go ahead and add a file to the image here. I'll just create a little out.txt file. We'll just say hi. And then from there, once it's created, we can actually do a directory listing and see it, or we can type it out. So kind of cool. This works like any standard image. It's just served over serial. Now, something we can configure here is the ability for the serial booting to be default within the virtual environment. To do this, we're going to download the XT IDE CFG utility, which allows us to configure our XT IDE BIOS. And once again, go ahead and put this in the serial directory, just so that it's with all the other files that we've downloaded so far. So I'll go ahead and get that taken care of. Easy peasy. Now everything is all together. So at this point, we need a way to get these files over to the virtual machine. I'm just going to use WinImage. So we can go ahead and launch WinImage. And then from there, we can create a 1.44 megabyte floppy disk. And then we're going to inject two files into this image, the XT IDE CFG utility and the BIOS file. And that's all that we'll need to be able to configure and customize the BIOS file, which we'll do here in just a minute. So we've got our first file injected there and I'll go ahead and inject the second file. And from there, what we can do is actually save this disk image out. So we can go to file and save as and give it a name. Make sure you save the type as not compressed or you will have problems. So I'm gonna change that first because I'm paranoid and we'll just call this xt.ima and put it in the, you guessed it, serial directory. Perfect. So next we're going to go ahead and inject this floppy disk image into the VirtualBox session. So let me get this in a position where we can do that. We'll go ahead and make this a minimal window. Okay, so we can choose our disk image. And then from there, I will navigate to the serial directory where we put it and find it. And we'll go ahead and make that readable again. <laughs> that small little screen gets a little tough. So I like to make the screen a little bigger. So now we're ready to actually launch XT IDE CFG, the configuration utility. So we'll get that launched. And now we can load that 386 BIOS file into memory so that we can manipulate it. After doing that, we can go down to configure it. And the first thing that we're going to do is set the number of ID controllers to one. We're only going to be using the system for serial boot, so that's all we need. And then we're going to configure the primary IDE controller to be a serial port virtual device. And then from there, we want to change the baud rate since we're booting up over a named pipe, which uses a faster baud rate. And then from there, we can go ahead and actually save this image back to its original file. Can't exactly flash it right now because this is virtualized, but we'll go ahead and save that image back. 
and then we can eject the floppy disk from the virtual machine. And now we can launch WinImage and actually pull that updated BIOS file off of the floppy drive image that we have since it has been updated. So we'll go ahead and load up the image that we created just a very few short moments ago, that xt.ima file that you may recall. And once loaded up, we can choose that IDE386.bin file that you see there and extract it back to the serial directory. And we'll overwrite the file that's already there. Perfect. Now at this point, you actually need to restart VirtualBox. So we'll go ahead and launch our DOS image one more time and let's see what happens. So immediately we see that the image gets detected and it starts to boot. We don't have to press any keys. Pretty cool. Next, let's look at doing this procedure on real hardware. There are some prerequisites. The first one is that you have an XT IDE card or nominally a card that will take an XT IDE universal BIOS. You also need to remove any CF cards or IDE hard drives installed since they will take precedent in booting. You also need a serial port on your modern PC or a serial port adapter like you see here. This one has a prolific chipset and it's my particular favorite when it comes to USB to serial adapters. And you're also going to need a NAW modem cable. Mine is actually a combined lap link NAW modem cable as you can see, two cables zip tied together, but I do have a nine pin and 25 pin serial connector. So next you need to connect the NAW modem cable from your modern computer to your retro PC. And of course we talked about the USB to serial converter and the concept of having an adapter with a prolific chipset. So you need to decide which serial port to use from your modern PC. And if you don't know what's available, you can always go to Device Manager. And actually, I think the SIR drive program will also tell you which serial ports are available on the machine. In my case, though, it's going to be COM7. So that works out well. So next, we're going to launch SIR drive. And we're going to launch another command prompt. I don't think administrator versus not administrator matters at this point because we're actually going to a remote PC but that's fine. We can change into the serial directory, and from there we can run sir drive. We need to pass a dash C option with the serial port, the name of the image, and a dash T to disable timeout because serial booting can be slow. So in my case, it's COM7, and it's myimage.ima, and then dash T, and we're all set to go. Now for demonstration purposes, I've also set the verbosity flag, but at this point we have moved over so you can watch the boot process in all of its glory. It takes about four minutes to boot at 9600 baud for my IBM PS2 model 3286. So the final thing I'm going to show today is showing real hardware with the ability to allow serial booting. First of all, it's most likely the case that your XT IDE card has an older version of the BIOS. I have found in some cases that upgrading the BIOS does cause problems making the CF card unbootable. Also, you need to be very careful about choosing the right XT IDE BIOS. Do you have an XT class machine? Do you have an NEC V20 which can use XT Plus? Do you have a 286 that can use the AT or a 386? And do you need the normal or large files for your particular system? Also, you need to enable the right enable jumper or dip switch. In my case, it's this dip switch number eight on my card so that we can enable right enable to the BIOS. And you also need to identify your EEPROM type. Mine is a 280C256. So if you're willing to proceed, go ahead and download the XT IDE CFG utility like we did in the virtual procedure, if you happen to watch that part. So we'll get that downloaded, and you can see I already have downloaded it, <laughs> so it's showing up twice. But what you're going to want to do is put that into the serial directory. We've already done that since I did the virtual procedure before this, but in any event, you want to have that available at your disposal. Okay. So next, you need to download the proper universal BIOS for your system. And as I mentioned above, you want to be careful to get the right version. 
If you get the wrong version, there could be repercussions and you might have to work yourself out of a jam. Though I have given you some hints here if that does happen and there are methods to start up without XT IDE, so that is good. In my case, I want to download IDE ATL.bin because this has support for XTCF and my 286 system, but it does require a 32K EEPROM. So once again, you have to be very careful. So now we're gonna copy XT IDE CFG to a floppy disk along with the universal BIOS. So I'll go ahead and do that. And we can go ahead and run the config utility off of drive A. So the first thing we'll do is load the BIOS from the file and I want that IDE ATL.bin file. And then from there, we want to go ahead and load old settings from the EEPROM so that we keep all of our old settings. That's very important if we want things to boot properly. From there, we can go into configure and we want to confirm our primary IDE controller. In my case, it is an XTCF BIU8, so we are good. So next, we're going to go into boot settings and we want to change the scan for serial drives to yes. Mine is already set to yes, but you will want to change that to yes. From there, we can hit escape, escape, and then we can actually go ahead and flash the EEPROM. Once again, you're going to need to know the type. And mine is that 28256 type, 32 kilobytes, so that's good. And then from there, we can start flashing. So we'll go ahead and pull the trigger on this. And on reboot, we see this master at com detect option with no other changes. So indeed, this was a success. So as long as no hard disk is present when you boot, you should be good to go. Alternatively, you could configure the system to only boot from serial devices. If you wanna do that, have a look at the virtual procedure above. That's what we ended up doing. And you can certainly replicate that here. I hope you enjoyed learning all about how to boot up a retro system over a NAW modem cable. As always, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.